Bebop. Welcome to Artist Bebop number 30. This is the weekly ramble where I take a timer for 22 minutes. I will ramble. So here we go. Ramble started. <laughs> I hope you're all doing well this week. I do enjoy it when people ask me how it's going. So, how are you? How are you? <laughs> I hope well. This was a, a cool week. I uh, have been putting a lot of shipping orders together, which is nice. So the summer can be slow, so it's nice to start seeing this activity. And shipping, shipping's hard, but it's very nice when I have to take a lot of mail out. So, very thankful. If you've ordered something from me, thank you. <laughs> Always appreciated. Always keeps the dream alive. Which, uh, yeah. It's funny, I, um, I just thought of this. The... I, I follow this wrestling podcast, and it, it was kind of weird because uh, they had a membership on their YouTube, and uh, ten dollars a month. I didn't really, I guess, read it. Just like, okay, cool. I've I follow these guys in your head wrestling. If you're curious, and then that gave me producer credit, and it's like me and one other. Or two other names, oftentimes. And I think about maybe they don't have a huge following, but I felt like there should be more producers. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I sent I sent them something earlier today, and I said, "Keep the dream alive." <laughs> so, which I hope so, because I'm very entertained. It's part of one of my rituals on Tuesday nights. I'll, uh, I'll sit here and do desk work and listen, sometimes comment. I would, I would, because you can video in. Very exciting. And uh, the, I don't know, I, uh, I have so much background noise with the kids. That's why I'm doing this at two in the morning. <laughs> it's still, it's still, my son was like grumbling in his sleep. And I didn't know if I was going to be able to record or I could record but yeah it's tricky it's a tricky balance but lately I had to organize my studio earlier this week and I found all these these mini surfaces canvases and I've been having fun working on those smalls i'm not always in the mood and so that's that's how my studio shifts is i'm not in the mood for these so they get put into corners and crevices and then get found again <laughs> it's funny because i think of my work as with all the textures and the layers, oftentimes it's archaeology. So, uh, digging through my own rubble of what becomes disorganization mimics the archaeology of that. It's life imitating art. <laughs> or art imitating life. I don't know. It's all very beautiful. <laughs> what else? I got some new postcards printed. I did. That. Let me see. I'm, I'm looking at that. That's why I said that. But it has a satchel page quote on the back. So, age is a question of mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. Satchel page. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Don't you mind it? Yeah. I, I just, uh, I think.
think I printed that because I'll send those out as thank you notes. But sometimes my work is at least what's the most visible, what I produce the most, I guess. There are different facets of my work, but sometimes, uh, well, it's very dude centric. That was my point. Let's spit it out. Uh, <laughs> but sometimes somebody who is not a dude orders from me and I feel weird sending these very dude centric postcards. So that still has Satchel Page on it, but I thought that was a fun quote that, yeah, I could, uh, I could feel okay about. <laughs> I've been, I've been the, cause usually I'll post my images online and it's just the name of when it is a figurative thing and the person it's just their name and i thought it'd be cool if i dug up trivia or quotes and that's been fun it's another thing to add to the amount of things i have to do but i think it's worth it <laughs> and i've been finding the 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 quotes themselves are inspiring like i feel like rah rah i already consume mainly listen to a lot of positive content and so that that's just adding to it I think it's good it feeds it and I feel it I've been so conscious about that I think me writing every day has contributed to that because I'm very every day I have to produce a written piece and I generally it generally is always related to the art. I can't think of an instance where it wasn't. There's always, even if it's a little thread, if it's nebulous, <laughs> what the connection is, there is always a connection to creativity. And just meditating on that is very inspiring on its own, but it also, I don't know, it breeds all this, this good flow and I've I've seen it there's that whole thing and I don't know what that's called where you know there's a spike and you can't pinpoint that this one thing did it but they coincide on the timeline and since I, I think I only started writing those in March I've seen that happen, which is, which is cool. It tells you a lot about energy. I do feel like this is the most focused I've ever been in my career, which is a great feeling, <laughs> especially with as much as I have going on and th this week. The kids got a dog. <laughs> this was unplanned, but my mom and brother went to see my sister in Atlanta. And when they got off the plane, I had totally forgotten that they were bringing my sister's dog because it, it's an older dog, a Papillon. And so... <laughs> I see my brother, I'm picking them up, and my mom's pushing her suitcase, and there's, there's the dog, there's Roomba, who I last saw in the early, like, 2010, 2011, and it was cool, it was like seeing an old friend, I'm like, oh my god, you're, you're gray. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. <laughs> and so my mom, she came by to say hi. She came by my house to say hi to the kids. And the, they were in love with the dog. And the, the plan was the dog was going to go with my mom. But I couldn't do that to those sweet little munchkin faces. And so... But I don't know, I think it came at the right time. 
the u the universe the universe brought it wrapped the doggy so that was cool <laughs> happiness is a big part of art that's how that relates to uh, art and artist bebop <laughs> Very true. I guess that's why I sit here and ramble. This is an inter this has been interesting. I don't know how many rambles I've done, but this in itself is interesting as far as extemporaneously speaking and really having no clue what I'm coming in to talk about. But having it all flows out. It all relates. Sometimes I shock myself with realization. <laughs> I, I think it's funny that... I think you can go all your life and... Well, you do go all your life and not fully understand yourself or... And not to even mention anyone else. <laughs> so, clarity. I don't know. What else? I, I was thinking about this earlier. It was a conversation I had with my friend Jeremy a few years ago. And it was cool because we were in a networking group. So this was our one-on-one. -on -one. And I got to hear all about his cool history. He's a sommelier, and he did ins. He was doing insurance. He still does insurance. He's my insurance guy. <laughs> the the uh, the insurance. I should know his company's name. I feel bad, but he's got this. Uh, it's nerd themed. The insurance nerd. That's not the name of it, though. Jeremy King. Look him up. <laughs> Google him. Great, great guy. I know him as Jeremy. That's why. But, so the conversation was that... Because I think he said it. Oh, I, I have no artistic ability. And I was like, look, I can only attest to my experience as a creative in the United States hearing that all my life <laughs> because I I picked it up early but just hearing that declaration of really self-deprecation I think it's it's just a conversational thing to say, you know, like, well, some weather, but I think that it's not good because the truth is, it's not that you don't have artistic ability, it's that you haven't tried. And I, I wrote about this, but I think it's important to say out loud Again, it's not that you don't have artistic ability. It's that you haven't even attempted it. But there are people that I've often encountered that are just willing to say that. Almost, like I said, it's a casual thing. But the thing I know, and especially I'm hyper-conscious of, raising children is that little ones soak that all in. So when I think of where did it come from, it probably came from an adult they heard say that. Then it's a clever thing to say in conversation. I can't draw a straight line. I, I can't do this. It, well, you haven't tried. If you tried and you were serious about it and you wanted it, then you, you most certainly could. It's a cool thing. One of my mentors, I have many, so many people that I have to thank 
for the inspiration, for pushing me along. Jesse Cantu, feel free to Google and link on LinkedIn's Pyramid Art Services. But you know, early career, I was a photographer, and that's how I got to know Jesse. Was I would photograph his paintings, and that was an education because he was a, an art major, went on to post grad. And so I would photograph his stuff and ask him questions and just, I was soaking it in. I didn't even realize I was doing that, but that, that's it. I was, he was an in for me. And so there was the point where I started in the dark room, things went digital. I had this malaise. <laughs> about that transition and started painting one day and I'd always drawn I'd always but you know it was sketchbooks and little collage books and these were where my thoughts went they were sketchbooks but I I took paint and then I'll never forget I was eating with my friend Martin at the 59 Diner in Houston, Willowbrook in 1960, across the street, there's a, there was a Jerry's Artorama. And I asked him as we were eating our greasy food, have you ever been over there? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, let, let's go. And so we go and pushing, pushing my cart. <laughs> and what did that, what did, what the reason I guess I had funding was I'd been, I was a photographer. And at that time, I always feel like that was a time of purgatory. I was photographing nightlife and that was fun and weird and wild, but I was getting, I was getting burned out and wondering what was wrong. And that was a gig where I worked six, seven nights a week and usually got paid cash. <laughs> so I had a stack of cash and I'm pushing my cart and Martin says, what are you doing? That's like $200 worth of painting materials. And I said, Martin, I'm, I'm, go I'm going to paint. And that's, that's where it started. And instantly I was making these things and I knew about making things. And I said, well, I got to sell them. And without hesitation, I just, I took that on. And here we are. <laughs> I don't remember. That was a tangent that I just went on, but it's strange how things can happen. And that's what I think about, like with all this AI stuff, it's not like I've never changed mediums. So what's one more? Say AI can paint everything I can, then what's the game? What's next? Because this, is about expression that's where the art comes in the if the ability can be done then there's no reason to do that thing maybe and i think that's okay but how as a human because this is my existence the art and artist and the more i think about this the more everything merges as far as art, the, the art is the existence. You know, all the, especially, I feel, I really feel that way doing writing, making videos, documenting the process while I'm in the process, thinking about the process, think about thinking about where the process is going. That's all. 
important to think about. It's vital. But I've, I've, I've always taken it that seriously for some reason. I remember being in drama. I've done my share of acting in them. Um, <laughs> in high school, I was... And, and that was funny because all, all I was doing was drawing the, the background scenery for some plays, some kids' plays mainly. I guess various plays. But so at one of the awards things at school, they announced my name. I had no clue. And I was inducted into the Thespian Society. And I'm a Thespian Society lifetime member. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> so, and that, that's another tangent. I don't know where that came from, but it's just that whole multimedia thing. It doesn't, doesn't matter. As long as you're, because expression is very much art. The different medias, dance, acting, drawing, painting, stacking plates, anything, <laughs> anything that you hone in on and it, it's in an elevate becomes an art. And I'm sure that can be debated, but I'm saying it, I'm drawing. My line in the sand. <laughs> yeah. I'm still, I'm, try, I'm trying to recover the tangent. I've been curious to see. Oh, here we go. There was my timer. Let me. Okay, timer. I was thinking it had a snooze, because when you snooze, it comes back, and I don't want that waking up my sleeping house. <laughs> I don't want munchkins to mess up my uh, outro here. Outro ramble. Outro ramble started. <laughs> Last week, I, know I didn't have much of an outro. I didn't have much energy. That was weird. That... I was like, wow, that was a, that was a harsh week, I guess. It's okay. Not harsh, like, just a lot of work. And that happens. And that's okay. But yeah, I was trying to, I, w I was saying, it'd be interesting to do this and be on my ADHD meds, because right now I'm, I'm not, I'm, this is just me. <laughs> but me focused would I go on so many tangents I can listen to stories so well without getting distracted things that I'm noticing it was cool because I I've had a couple of entries about my ADHD and somebody yesterday said thank you for sharing this that made me feel good that, yeah, you know, thank you as in, I don't know, maybe they didn't feel alone. Because, yeah, like the whole, I can't even draw a straight line thing, I think. ADHD is thrown around like that, and it's a reason... I never bothered to get a diagnosis until a friend of mine said, Hey, <laughs> do it. <laughs> and she was right. Thank you, Angie. Okay, I'm going to quit rambling or we'll just be here another two hours. Thank you for listening. And I will see you next time. Welcome to my world. El Santos world. Bebop.